Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Kagem. Today we're doing a chatty get ready with me. We have a bunch of dragging stories to get through as well. We'll also answer some questions because I got some questions and then I'm going to be doing my makeup and skincare throughout the whole thing. So it's kind of a mixture. We're going to do dragging stories, luxury hot takes, questions, and then just sort of general chit chat about luxury. But before we get, go any further, let me show you what I picked up today. I went shopping today and I picked up some things which I wanted to show you. As most of you know, I live in Tanzania, which is in East Africa. We don't have any high-end luxury stores here, but we do have a MAC um, cosmetics store and we do have like some people who distribute like luxury perfumes as well. So I want to show you some new things which I picked up. I'm just getting them out here. I actually got this from the Mac store, but they didn't have any more of their branded like bags. Um, so I just wanted to show you what I ended up getting today. And of course, I did. <laughs> I did my um, my nails today. So I put on like new press on. So let me first show you what I got. I don't know why I I knew I was filming this video. So I don't know why I decided to do like like my nails and stuff like i don't know why so anyway let me show you what i got from the perfume store because i'm trying to open it without ruining my new beautiful press on nails because you know i love press on nails honey um so yeah let me show you what i got um so i got here we have i got gucci bloom Natare di Fiori. This is really beautiful. So this is one of the uh, offshoots of Gucci Bloom. Um, I love this. This is really beautiful. So this is a hundred milliliter. I was about to say millimeters. A hundred milliliter eau de parfum intense vaporizata natural spray. So again, let's open it. <laughs> Where's <of> my nails? <laughs> So let me just quickly show you. I just want to quickly show you. Um, this is quite pricey um, for here because everything's obviously imported. Um, it's so, so beautiful. Look at the packaging. Gosh, the packaging is so beautiful. So I just want to, oh my God, it smells like, you can literally smell it. Like it smells like a garden. That's the box. And this is the perfume. God, it's so gorgeous. I love it. The packaging, the packaging is so luxurious. Look at that, like gorgeous. And then it says um, Gucci on the top there. And let me just quickly give you um, my first impressions of it. Oh, love this packaging. Oh, wow. And I smelt it today at, in the perfumery. I was like, wow. Oh my gosh. Mm, it just smells like a burst of flowers it does it smells like a burst of flowers in like a secret garden it's really beautiful so it says it says gucci bloom um netare di fiori um really really stunning i think the top notes in this are ginger and rose and the first impressions that i have of this perfume is that it's just a gorgeous floral bouquet of gorgeousness I loved it when I smelt it um, at the perfumery today and I love it even more. For those of you um, who, are, who are curious where I got this, I got this in Mimani city um, in Dar es Salaam. So yeah, so I got this and then now that I've really <laughs> sprayed myself and then I picked up this um, skin base visage from MAC. Um, this is, like I said, from the only official MAC um, cosmetics um, boutique in tanzania and this is how it is i'm going to use this um when obviously i'm doing prep um, for my makeup for this video and then i also picked up my favorite lip gloss um well they call it well smack lip gloss technically but we'll just call it lip gloss anyway um from mac it's called bittersweet me this is the perfect perfect nude um lip gloss for dark skin if you have your skin tone is the same as me it's going to look very bright here because it's going to look very light because of the um, ring light um but it's yeah very very uh, just a really really gorgeous color so i'm going to also going to use this as well so without further ado let's get into the video i think i'm going to start off with um the dragging stories because i think that's what you guys will want to hear and then we'll do questions and then i'm going to give you my hot takes and stuff as well so i'm 
excited for this. I hope um, this video won't be too long um, and I hope that you're gonna find it okay. All right, so everything will be linked below that I use and um, you know, without further ado, let's get into the dragging. Hey guys, let's get into the dragging. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read the stories and then I'm gonna react to the dragging story as I'm doing my makeup, okay? The first um, story is from um, Sydney, Australia. Um, so basically this person just, she's going in, she's saying how she's from France, she's saying that she's been buying Picasso for 20 years, um, she says that her and her friend were treated badly, they wanted to buy bracelets, um, and then she says the Big H experience um, was was poor, and, she, and then she said despite the supply issues on the bracelet that I wanted, he told me he could not even send me a message um, to let me know when they'll be restocked, so I have to check every day uh, the restocking joke i get that they don't have enough people but this is big h they don't behave like a mis they don't behave like a maison deluxe um so by that she means they, they're not behaving like a luxury house not to mention a rude comment to my friend when we get the shoes telling her louboutin is five steps behind congratulations um big h australia you have succeeded to ruin 30 years of unconditional love um to that brand okay okay so a few things obviously the person is upset um from how she was treated and let's just be clear because i'm always accused of defending big h and her ponytail and her wig um all the time um whenever i film like my like dragging videos and stuff so i i do agree i was thinking when i um first like read this dragging story i was thinking maybe she was buying um leather jewelry because i do feel like the leather fashion jewelry so you know like the kelly double tour uh bracelets and things like that i do feel like those don't really count i mean they count but they don't because i feel like if this was fine jewelry i feel like the essay would not be um so flippant about the whole thing i mean i don't know what you guys think expecting like really incredible um customer service from a very busy boutique and you're like a walk-in tourist with no history at that particular store the sydney store is the flagship boutique for all of australia i mean i think that's also a little bit delusional like i'm sorry i'm not really like understanding um why she's so angry here so let's just move on to the next dragging story because i just didn't really understand um like why the person was getting so upset um and then this is also big h australia no valid reason for it taking 40 minutes to get into the boutique similar lines at gucci and dior um and one tenth of the waiting time even the security couldn't coherently explain to me why the wait was um this long when the shop was basically empty if it's scarcity for the sake of justifying their prices um there's absolutely no way this will fly when inflation is this crazy and only getting worse get real about your market power okay now again a few things you know let's be real here let's keep it gucci honey because this person mentioned gucci um in their review um so let's keep it very gucci um in these uh in in the, in the response to the dragon first of all first of all let's be completely honest inflation is not really going to be affecting people who are playing the big cage game i think the big cage game is going to be affecting people who are mainly looking for great deals um, on the resale market like people who want to play at the resale market i've even noticed like the resale market itself um has basically called definitely for like even like really really hard to get bags um like the mini kelly so the person saying like oh i've waited too long and are they doing this as a scarcity thing they probably are doing it as a scarcity thing and as like a marketing thing for sure i definitely um can, can see that being an issue but i think my thing with people saying like oh you know you know the person saying they need to get real about their market power i mean let's be very clear here they have huge phenomenal um market power and they're doing very well um and that's because their customer base can withstand those kind of financial pressures in a way that customer bases um, for other brands um, cannot. Let's keep it Gucci, okay? I love Gucci very much. And I think Gucci is a top tier phenomenal brand. But Gucci and Versace um, and even Fendi, I would say their client bases um, would be um, client bases that are just maybe... Um, I, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like 
other brands like Versace and Gucci, they would have client bases based on like their products as well, like the way they price their products. Their products are priced very well. Fendi prices well, Versace prices very well for a top tier brand. And so does Gucci. I mean, their client bases might be looking on, on the inflation side, on the inflation side, I beg your pardon, much more than a um, you know, big H client, um, for example. So I think it's just really important to acknowledge that. I know that people um, are upset about the way that they are treated um, in these stores and I don't disagree like queuing and waiting you know is a nightmare I'm someone who hates queuing so for me like queuing would just be an absolute disaster but I also don't want to make appointments because I like the idea of just walking in and going in when I want but I don't know about you know kind of saying like oh well inflation you know inflation is not going to affect um big h like you can want it to affect big h boo boo but it's not going to affect big h um like that if you ask me anyway i don't know how other people um feel about it but i just don't feel like big h is going to be affected by inflation that much and by that what i mean is the people who play the game um at the boutique sorry i just want to fix my hair here the people who play the game you know at the store i don't really see how they are going to be the ones who are necessarily going to be affected um that much so the person's mad a big h um sydney okay and i respect that but um you know let's be honest they're not really going to be affected i think it's just worth noting that if you disagree with me let me know make sure that you like this video um and make sure that you're fully subscribed to my channel and let's keep going with the dragon stories the next one is also from Big H Sydney. I don't know what's going on in Sydney <laughs> at the moment. My husband and I traveled from Melbourne and traveled all the way to Sydney to experience the Sydney um, flagship boutique. Honestly, my husband wanted to try his luck to get me a dream bag for our anniversary. This was a month ago, by the way, but we got home no luck. But we were amazed with the services that our SA gave us. She showed me my dream bag on display as at least I have the chance to touch it and try it on. So I don't know if it's for me or not. Plus she didn't force me to buy anything nor spend money on things that I don't need. She helped me to choose the right things that look good on me. Um, we will definitely recommend this essay and we'll go back to the um, Sydney uh, boutique um, for next time. So this is an interesting review because it was a very positive um, review. So she had a good experience, but I wanted to kind of bring it up because there's some Hermes glyphics there. Um, if you haven't um, if you haven't already noticed like the types of shenanigans that are going on with Big H So first of all, let's kind of just chat about it. Let me figure out what I'm doing though first Okay, so I think that this one was super interesting because This person was saying how her husband wanted, um, you know to get her a dream bag um, From the Sydney store and then she does say that she is from Melbourne, which also does have um, a boutique as well. The thing that I found really interesting about this story is the fact that her husband wanted to get her a dream bag, AKA a Burke and Kelly or Constance from the store. Um, but obviously, you know, that didn't happen because it sounds like they are brand new um, to the store. I really feel like this kind of links up with a lot of what people from Australia have been telling me about the boutique. Um, in Australia, which is that if they really do play by the book there, you know, you have to be a client who has shown loyalty um, and the um, Holy Grail quota bags go to clients that have um, shown loyalty. But I think this person had a positive experience because they tried, um, but they didn't, you know, take it personally, you know, that it didn't like happen for them and didn't like come through, but they still tried and had a good, good experience. I always get accused. Um, whenever I film these videos of never of always just like posting um, the super negative stories like oh you're always negative you're always posting you know the nasty negative stories post like positive stories from time to time I posted a positive story here so you can see the Hermes glyphics <laughs> behind um, the positive story but I think the thing here is you know um, milestones don't work telling the essay oh my husband's here you know trying to get um, an anniversary bag I mean gosh they hear it every single day like it just doesn't matter um, to them anymore and this is just kind of my reading of the whole thing all right now let's go to the mother ships country aka France the next dragging story um, is a French review it was translated into English um, I this is of the Cannes boutique I asked for the um, available bags and the um, essay took me saying that 
saying today that she would not sell me a bag. So I asked her tomorrow and then she said that she did not know any more. I mean, gosh, the person, the person basically got dragged, okay? They were not going to be sold um, a quota bag. So the person said, you know, they asked them, you know, like, are there any available bags? And she said, you know, that she was not going to sell her a bag. And then she asked tomorrow and then the essay is like, you know, I don't know about tomorrow. Well, the essay is not selling you a bag, boo-boo. So there's no point in you kind of making a issue about it. I'd love to know what you guys think about this story because I think this one is very indicative of the times that we live in today. I feel like, like today, people are quite direct in asking for um, Holy Grail quota bags because they hear about the sort of tales of, oh yeah, you can score, you know, without any um, purchase history. And then when they go um, to France and ask, they then get seriously um, disappointed as well. I'd love to know what you guys think about this one. So that one is the boutique in Cannes. Personally, I think it's a rookie mistake to just ask like, hey, can I, you know, ask for a bag? Obviously, this person's asking, asking for a Beck and Kelly or Constance. It's so obvious. You can always tell when they're asking for um, a Beck and a Kelly or a Constance because of the way that the um, essay responds. I feel like in, in locations, particularly like Cannes, the Cannes location has um, a lot of um, local VIPs and big spenders. I feel like walking in and asking cold um, for a bag, in my opinion, for 2022 is not relevant. If you ask me, just me sharing my opinion, um, I'm not saying that I'm right with everything, no, but I'm just sharing my um, opinion. I don't think um, it's correct, basically. Just walking in there saying, hey, do you have a Burke and Kelly or Constance? Um, I think they're gonna look at you and be like, you have a cone on your head. Even, even I think even regionally, like the Evelyn and the Picota and the Lindy, I think even those bags are just gonna be like, well, I mean, you know, I think they're just gonna look at you confused. Like you've got a cone on your head, girl. Like why are you asking me for these bags? So the essay telling her that she wasn't going to sell it to her, that's a very harsh, um, response but it does not surprise me because there's a lot of competition I've been hearing different thing different things I beg your pardon about the can store and I've been hearing that it is incredibly um, busy at the moment and people are not getting um, coat bags just walking in like you'd be lucky to get a Lindy um, or a pickle town um, or the uh, Evelyn as well um, so yeah let's move on to the next um, dragon story this is also of the can boutique um, waiting outside in the sun is torture, haughty staff, um, once inside more than, I was once inside more than half an hour of waiting is minimum, um, in front of our state, in front of us a bottle of water was offered to us, we left without buying anything, we were kindly advised to buy on the internet, not easy for the size of ring or for the length of bracelets, same, we would, we had the same disappointed feeling as tourists outside, it's, it's, the, the person's writing in French, but basically they're saying it's like Disneyland. And this is again of the Cannes store. I'm just really surprised at the way um, Big H in this particular location is telling French clients like, just go and buy it online, go and buy it online. I'm wondering, is the essay saying that because they feel like this client isn't going to spend um, like a ton of money at the boutique and not going to show a lot of loyalty? Or are they just saying that because they're just saying it to say to say that? I mean, I would be really surprised if they didn't want to sell, um, you know, fine jewelry to clients. I was really, really um, bemused and perplexed by this particular dragon story because I just didn't understand why the person wants to buy a ring that is a fine jewelry piece. Like to tell the person, go on the internet. I mean, I think that is very odd when we all know like how important it is to purchase your fine jewelry um, in the boutique. Um, the next one here is the um, X on Provence boutique for Big H. Went, I went, this one is in English. I went to look at, at a crossover bag. The salesperson told me they don't have them. Then, then she asked me what size and color I wanted. By crossover, I think she means like the Evelyn. Um, I asked her to bring what she had since I'm flexible on size and color. She insisted I tell her the size and color. I told her any neutral color, large size. She left to check stock. I pretend somebody they don't have the bag in that size or, and color. She said, come back tomorrow. 
rude and um, odd behavior for a high-end boutique with a customer ready to purchase. This is a new review. It's from about um, two months ago. Um, I mean, I think that this one... Actually, wait, hold on, wait. This isn't um, Aix-en-Provence. This is Cam. Um, I think that there are a few things. First of all, I think this person sounded like a reseller. So when they got that feeling that the person might be a reseller, I think they were just like... I think she was tested there. Like, tell me what, you know, what um, size and what color you want. And then, instead of her being, like, quite direct, at first she's like, oh, I'll take any. I feel like that's why they always say, don't say that you will take any. Because that really does make you sound like a um, reseller for sure. So, I don't know. I thought that was super interesting. Um, I think that this person, like, accidentally sounded like a reseller and then got flagged. And then they were like, and then she comes back like, oh, I don't have it in the size and color um, that you want. But then, alternatively, I was thinking that maybe the SA didn't want to sell to this particular client. So just wanted to mug her off. Because to me, she sounds like she got mugged off as well. Um... So yeah, let's go to the next one. Again, this is Can. I don't know what's going on in Can. Um, the essays were nice. I got I got a few things, but what was strange? They kept telling me maybe next Tuesday we'll have a bag. Come back next week this time. And then when they and then when she comes back, they say we had no deliveries. I went three times and they offered me no bags. <laughs> it was hot in Can, yet they kept telling me to come back and offered no bags again two months ago. They wasted a lot of my time. Yeah, I mean, I think that that is, that is not good. <laughs> okay, so let's kind of chat about that. So she's being told, hey, go here, go here, come, come, come. Hey, come back next Tuesday, we might have a bag for you. And then she comes back and they don't have a bag for her. So, I mean, what do we kind of think about this? Um, first of all, this doesn't surprise me about that location. I've heard mixed things about the store. Um, we also don't know like what she had on her profile because um, I do think the regional stores are also very um, profile dependent as well. Like it depends what your profile looks like. Like if your profile looks really good, maybe they'll be more willing um, to work with you. But I do think that this like one of the things that I do think is troublesome about shopping at Big H versus other brands is this whole thing of, hey, can you come back another time? You come back. And then they're like, oh, by the way, I don't have the bag for you. Well, I've come back. I mean, and you don't have a bag for me? I mean, yeah, I would be upset with that as well if that was me. I'd be really, really upset. So I'd love to know what you think about that. A lot of people were saying it was very hot this summer um, for the people who were shopping in the south of France. Um, it sounds like it was very hot um, in Cannes um, as well. But based on her review and many other reviews, I think to be unable to even just like tell the person like hey come back on this time and then you don't even have a bag for them that to me sounds quite unbelievable so i took that to mean she was told there is no like like come back and get your bag on tuesday she goes three times and she gets no bag what that says to me is that she basically got um her office snatched which we're going to talk about later on in the video because office snatching is a real thing like hey come back next tuesday we might have a bag for you girl you know we might have something for you she comes back nothing second time she comes back nothing third time she comes back nothing to me that says that she has been gazumped okay gazum gazumping is a uk um property term for when you um try and purchase a property um and you put your offer in and then the seller of the property agrees to your price and then someone comes in with a better offer and snatches the um property from you and the seller goes with with that person uh, even after promising it to you to me it sounds like she got gazumped three times which is i mean honestly that is rare for something like that to happen but I was actually not surprised. So I'd love to know what you think about that one as well. And that is the Exxon Provence store. And just to quickly just say, the Exxon Provence boutique has a lot of local VIPs, a lot of local ballers. The Exxon Provence like property market, there are a lot of people who live um, in the south of France. There are a lot of people who are balling and who want to spend money there and who want to live in the south of France and would happily shop um, in those um, boutiques that are in the south of France. So 
no one should think oh i'm gonna go to the south of france it's gonna be really easy for me um to get a uh, boutique offer as a tourist and especially as a tourist that doesn't speak french without having to show any loyalty that's just not going to happen so that sucks that she um and and i don't know why i'm saying x i keep saying x on provence i beg your pardon um what i meant to say by that was can because she was talking about can here but can is all, obviously also in the south of france the south of france boutiques are incredibly um competitive so you shouldn't think like oh i'm gonna go to the south of france it's gonna be really easy for me um to score something but Big H, the ponytail, is wrong here. She shouldn't have been inconvenienced. I would be super upset if I was told, come back three times. What if she was in Paris and they kept telling her, come back, come back, come back. That is a massive inconvenience. So yes, I agree. That is not cool at all. All right. Now uh, let's go to my favorite uh, dragging story out of all of these. And this is the final one um this was written in french um so i'm gonna read the google translation um it's very very long but here we go very bad experience at um big h in x on provence hospital ho like she wrote in french um l'accueil which means like the the welcome so what she meant was the the way you're welcomed is uh, based on um your appearance people who look like they have money are are given are, are, are asked if they are because the google translate isn't bad so i'm going to just translate from the original french people who um, look like they have money are asked um, if they're thirsty or hungry while people who buy but don't look like they have money are not um, asked anything um and then she goes on um to review like the sort of general customer service and after sales I bought a pair of shoes for 500 euros. I brought them back after wearing them once because the color had faded. I got them back three months later and the shoes looked exactly the same. And then I was told that this, the gesture to me was to offer um, the cleaning um, like, as a, like as, a, as, a, as a nice gesture, basically. Um, I bought them in April and then basically she's saying that in August, like, you know, she had to like um, return them for them to get um, fixed or something. I strongly advise you to go to Big H Marseille. They're much more professional. So this is super interesting. I want to chat about um, this review of the X um, boutique. I'm really surprised that she mentioned um, Big H Marseille because the Marseille store has been a drag honey so many times. But um, the point that she was saying about the way you are treated based on the way you look, we've chatted about this many times and anytime I bring this up, people literally fight me. Some of you send me private DMs, still fighting me, boo boo, and I have no idea why you're fighting me because we all know this is facts. We all know it's about um, the way you look and yeah, it's, yeah, the way you present yourself and the way you look and we all know that. So. I think the thing that she said that was really interesting is the fact that she said the people who look like they have money are asked, you know, do you want to drink something or are you hungry? And the people who are buying things but don't look like they have money are basically not even afforded um, that right. I think that this is just emblematic of luxury shopping. This isn't even so much Big H, this is all of them. Particularly, I think, in France where, and this is just my reading of the situation, again, having lived there and having traveled there um, many times, I feel like if you look really, really, really like, um, I think if you look super polished, you could look very elegant, you could look minimalistic, or you could be a logomania person. I feel like all of that counts equally. And the people who look like that, I feel like are just given better service. I think I'd said it before, whether you wear um, the row or Bottega Veneta ready to wear, um, maybe in a big H um, Parisian store or a French boutique, or you wear like a Gucci, you know, monogram, uh, like a Gucci monogram jacket or something. I feel like for them, they just look and they feel like that looks like you have money. And I do think that a lot of essays are motivated by the way people look. And I don't know why people fight this. Did that person lie and say that you're, that essentially the person was saying that you're treated better um, if you look rich? I mean, where is the lie? And that's not just for Big H. I would say that even just generally speaking, you are treated better when you look um, 
when you look very very like expensive and you could say that is because of logomania clothing or you could say that's because of the garments look, looking really good but not having logos the bottom line is you are treated better and this is a fact um, of the matter um i just think that to make the shopping experience in paris um slash france slash europe because i do think london is similar um, in my experiences when I um, was living in the UK, I do think London is similar. I think that if you look um, like a bag of money, you will be treated like a bag of money um, in a lot of European um, locations. I'm not saying it's right, but I am just, um, yeah, telling you guys the tea. I've heard from a few of you that the Italian boutiques are very similar. If you look... Um, super super like glamorous um, i mean that kind of makes sense a lot of the best um fashion brands in the world are from italy gucci versace fendi you know ferragamo if you look like a bag of money in italy i have been told that the big cage boutiques will be like okay that person's really stylish you know you're gonna have to drop a few bags as well on bait items you might offer you a bkc as a tourist and that is stuff that i have heard but it is dependent on the way the person presents themselves what do you guys think about that it's a very controversial thing i'd love to know like what you got what your takes are on it honestly it doesn't really bother me because tanzania is very similar um there's actually drama that happened here at a high-end restaurant that Edwin was telling me about today. It went viral um, and a restaurant here was accused of treating a client badly and she said that she was treated badly. Um, the, 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 Swahili, the Swahili she used, what she was saying was she was treated badly because of the way she looked. Um, and this is like a high-end restaurant um, that's very, very expensive and very pricey. I was not surprised at all. Um, at her treatment if you look very if you just dress, dress like kind of casually um here you're not treated the same as people who are wearing diamonds and gold or look really nice or have a really really nice car so in da it's like the car you drive like if you go to a restaurant and you are wearing just like you know you know just normal casual clothes but you come up in a bentley or a range rover or a mercedes you're going to be treated better than if you were driving my nissan for example so if i go in the autobiography range rover i'll be treated way better i'd love to know what you guys think about um that um dragging story of the experience in the x um location what are your thoughts on the way that she um, claims that she was treated was she treated badly look it is what it is you have to look good when you are going shopping there if you want to be treated very well yes some people will treat you well regardless there's no question but generally speaking most of these reviews even from people who are french um citizens most of the reviews um all say um similar stuff that you are treated much better if okay you look like a bag of money so i learned my lesson as well when i was there in january um i feel like in january i just looked way too casual for luxury shopping and i learned my lesson so when i go back i'm gonna make sure that i look um like a bag of money honey that's what i'm gonna do um and i don't mind making that effort these are fashion um products after all there's nothing wrong with looking like fashion honey when you're going shopping for fashion so i'd love to know what you guys um, think about that um as well so those are all of the dragging stories um that i wanted to share um i'd love to know if you still like my dragging videos i hope um that you're not tired of them are they still relevant do you enjoy them make sure you like comment share and subscribe and of course go join the group and follow me on instagram as well now i want to answer um some questions um so let me just do that oh god this smells so good it smells like cupcakes it smells so 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 good so let me start answering um some of your questions I don't know why people fight the whole looking nice thing like the people who look really nice are, are going to be treated better than the people who don't it is what it is okay um so here we go hannah asks me because i put a sticker on instagram like give me your luxury hot takes because we're going to talk about office snatching in a second um hannah says set aside a small percentage of inventory to prevent office snatching Ooh, this is interesting. I feel like Big H would not do this though, though, I beg your pardon, because 
I feel like Big H would be like, no, you know, we're not going to do this because they, they still want um, the products to be so, so, so hard to get. And many people's offers um, are being snatched. And that's just like the reality of it. I just feel like that is like making it too easy for us. And I feel like Big H um, prides herself on not making things easy um, for the people who um, shop with the brand. But it's a good idea, <laughs> for sure. The next one is from VJ Loves. Um, she says, I'm bored of Lux now. I think I've overconsumed. Nothing is exciting me, sadly. To be honest with you, I think this is a really interesting thought because I'm actually kind of tired of like luxury fashion. I'm tired of handbags. I'm tired of like luxury fashion, not because I think it's fast fashion or anything like that. I think I'm just more interested now in, um, we, I've, and I've always been interested in like high-end luxury cars and fine jewelry, but I'm more interested right now in like luxury cars, luxury jewelry, and like really high-end travel. So I've been reading more about private jets. I've been reading about helicopters and people who charter them. I actually found out there's like a helicopter company that is on the uh, peninsula um, near Oyster Bay. Um, I'm more interested in other types of luxury now um, because I feel like fashion gets really repetitive after a while. I don't know. I feel like luxury fashion gets really repetitive after a while. I am actually really enjoying watching people's like Zara hauls and ASOS hauls. I know many of you don't like fast fashion. I don't really, I don't like have a, like a feeling about it either way. I think that it has its place and I think I still feel like it's very relevant as well. Um, so now I want to share with you my hot takes as well. So let me share with you some of my hot takes. I wrote them down <laughs> so I wouldn't forget because I didn't want this video to be a long rambling mess. I hope that this video has been interesting and engaging to watch because I've had to kind of like <laughs> multitask um, throughout the whole video. Um, but I wanted to yeah just kind of share with you like a few hot takes that I had. So make sure that you keep watching. Let me just pull them up because I wrote them in my notes. Aha, okay, let's start off with my hot takes now. Um, let's start off with office snatching. Okay, so what is office snatching? Office snatching is my phrase for when your offer gets taken um, and given to a bigger spending client. This is happening um, a lot. A lot of people on social media have been reporting that their offers have been taken and their offers, honey, have been snatched. Okay, Pegasus, Pegasus and Hermes and Messenger God have flown down and taken your offer and given it um, to someone else. This does not surprise me at all. There's so much competition um, for these bags. Um, someone who spends more um, and might decide, hey, I want this bag and that might be the bag that was allocated to you. I don't necessarily think that this happens like a, a lot of the time, but I think that this is happening um, frequently enough for it to be a problem. So my view on office snatching is I think it's just a very cutthroat, ruthless um, community, like a shopping community. I think Big H shopping is ruthless <laughs> um, and cutthroat. So it does not <laughs> surprise me at all that people's offers are being snatched and being given to other people. I would not want my offer snatched, but I would not be surprised um, if that happened, um, if I was shopping in a very um, competitive location. I think that's what that's what happened to one of the people in the dragging story who was um, shopping in the south of France. I think her offer got snatched. Like they told her, come back, you know, we'll offer you, you know, Burke and Kelly or Constance, whatever, we'll offer you a bag. And then um, she comes back and then her offer is taken away and it got snatched. Okay, so then the next um, point that I wanted to kind of chat about, this is one of my hot takes. I don't really understand why in the Big Hate shopping community, why do people minimize um, how much loyalty they show to the ponytail? Um, you, you guys, you know how much I love Versace. You know I'm a big Versace girl. I love the brand so much. Versace is not like that. People who love Versace are proud to say, Oh, I bought this like vintage Vers Gianni Versace silk shirt from, you know, whatever year, you know, in the 90s before he passed on, God rest him. But people who shop from Versace are like proud to say that they shop at Versace and are proud to show like things from their own personal archives. Like Versace clients have their own archives, like who are like ready to wear pieces. Like, oh, I bought this ready to wear piece this year. Or I bought this this year. Big H shoppers 
every single big hate shopper pretends or says or makes it seem like they have never bought anything from the brand oh I, I never really buy anything I don't really buy anything but I get these really great offers as if the Birkin wasn't um, paid for as if the Kelly wasn't paid for or as if the concert wasn't paid for and my hot take is why um, are we at a point with big H luxury shopping where no one wants to really like show that loyalty um, to big H like why has it come to that i don't really i don't really understand that like i said love versace love gucci as well um and those two brands have like seriously loyal clients who are proud to say i shop at gucci i shop at um, big versace honey and these are all of the really incredible things that i have and what, i'm not talking about handbags i'm talking about ready to wear or all these other types of categories as, as well um because like Versace is absolutely a ready to wear house and i think that gucci is also a ready to wear house as well so i want to know why do all big hate shoppers not all i'm just trying to be controversial here why do many big hate shoppers pretend or make it seem like oh i don't really buy anything is it because people want to kind of compete with each other to see who gets the best offer for showing the least amount of loyalty or is it because people want to seem like they're special and they were chosen by the boutique and they don't have to do as much um they don't have to work as hard in terms of showing loyalty um to the brand i genuinely am so confused when people say oh i've been you know shopping at big h for you know x amount of years um and i've been shopping at big h since like 2010 or 2009 or whatever but i you know i rarely buy anything and i get all these great offers well that doesn't really make any sense because how are you getting really great offers and you're shopping at the brand for five years or a decade but you have never had to show any loyalty like we're not even I'm not even talking about ratios or one-to-one -one. i genuinely don't understand that I see it on social media a lot. I see it all over like, you know, forums and Facebook groups and TikToks and all the rest of it. And so many people are like, oh, you know, I never like really get anything, but I get all these great quotes offers. Um, I don't really understand that. I don't, I, I feel like Big H understands that they have might have this as an issue because honestly, other brands do not have this issue. You'll never, anyone who loves Versace is not going to minimize the things that they have from Versace. They're going to proudly display them and show them and they'll be so proud of it like people who shop from big h don't want to talk about the things that they have in their big h collection unless it's a burke and kelly or constance that is something i don't understand boo boo i need some of you to explain it to me because i do not understand it it seems like this weird competition to see who spends the least and who has the best um quota collection i genuinely don't understand that um and i'd love to know what you guys think and then finally, I wanted to talk to you guys about influencer privilege. I chat to a lot of you guys um, by DM as well. Um, and I do get a lot of questions about like, oh my God, this person got this offer. What do you think? Some of you are like, make a video about the fact that this person got this offer and they didn't have to show a ton of loyalty um, and all this. Well, first of all, I'm not going to do that because I don't have beef with other people's offers in terms of if someone got a really great offer and they didn't have to show a ton of loyalty, that does not actually really bother me. And I'm going to tell you why. Influencer privilege is a thing. I have talked about this before. It is absolutely a thing. If you think that um, influencer privilege doesn't exist, I have a bridge to sell you. Influencers do have privilege um, and it's just easier for them, like the fashion and lifestyle influencers. Many essays might know who they are and they're more than happy to um, like, you know, offer them a Burke and Kelly or Constance easily um, without them showing a lot of loyalty um, because they know that the influencer is going to unbox it on their TikTok, their Instagram, their YouTube. And the, some essays might just enjoy the fact, hey, I'm going to offer an influencer a really beautiful offer because I like that person. I like the way they are. So I want to offer them something really nice. Don't name drop people. I don't have any beef, beef with people. Don't name drop people who work at Big H either. You know, we're just talking about this from a general point of view. And th the bottom line that I'm saying is you can't hate the player. You have to hate the game. If you think that um, it's really unfair, you have to make that decision to say, hey, look, okay, I think I might be done shopping at Big H or I think I might just 
you know might lick my wounds for a little bit but you can't take it personally yes it's easier for influencers to get offered um bkc's it's just the way it is and you can't um really be mad at that my only thing is just like i think the influencers who do get those like really easy um bkc offers i think it would be nice for them to be like hey i realize i might be a famous influencer maybe that might impact the fact that it might just be a little bit easier for me i think that would be fantastic if they would do that but it's not necessary per se i do think influencer privilege in the big H shopping community is very real i think it's also very real generally speaking even at chanel and louis vuitton as well i'd love to know what you think about my hot takes like i said i'm not mad honey at the player it is the game it is what it is i want to know what you guys think make sure that you tell me did you like um, this chatty get ready with me where we talked about dragging stories we talked about luxury hot takes let me just make sure that i look pretty decent again like i said i did these nails and they seem like they're pretty strong because they're not breaking so yeah i think that is my makeup look i think we're done here um make sure that you go follow me i'm just double checking because <laughs> the ring light is there um, make sure you, you go follow me on Instagram, on TikTok, and join my Facebook group. It's linked below. And also go join my email newsletter. It's also linked below. Everything that I use will be linked um, below. I had this traditional hairstyle done. This is like a very old um, African hairstyle. It's been done for centuries and centuries and centuries um, on the continent. My husband was really surprised. He's like, wow, you, you just had this traditional style done. I haven't done it in the longest period of time. So this is a traditional style it's done with thread and my hair has been some some people think they're like locks or dreadlocks they're not it's done with thread so yeah i'm really loving this traditional style i think i'm going to be doing more traditional styles as well i kind of love everything so i would love to know what you guys think about everything and what do you think about this format like i said don't forget to follow me on all of my socials go join my facebook group link below and also sign up for the newsletter super super important i just want to remind you guys i feel like in more newsletter um subscribers are really going to be liking um what i'm going to be putting out on my next newsletter is coming out on the 31st of october very excited about that i would love to know what your hot takes are as well about luxury it doesn't just have to be about big h or big c tell me what you guys think about everything make sure that you're fully subscribed and you hit notifications my next video is coming out um on thursday um, and also at the moment i've been reading a lot of the rob report so the rob report is like a very 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 high-end luxury magazine um they don't talk about they don't even talk about luxury handbags like luxury handbags are like you know they're just like okay they talk about like private jets they talk about luxury watches they talk about like really expensive luxury hotels and style and things that cost like a hundred thousand dollars two hundred thousand dollars i've really been reading that like ultra luxury at the moment that's kind of what's inspiring me to continue posting so i'd love to know what is also inspiring you and what are your luxury hot takes thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys next week in my next video